6.16 p.m. Five minutes later, the place was crawling with police cars and ambulances. It was exactly like an episode of Stop, Police. Mr. Bradford was placed on a stretcher and put into an ambulance. Believe it or not, he was still insulting me up until the last second. Might want to get that looked at, he said, pointing at my blotch. And you might want to find out what kind of food they serve in jail, I shot back. Mrs. Craig, who was still clutching her red wig, was put in a police car. She looked shocked, terrified, and relieved all at the same time. Good luck, I heard myself say as her car drove away, but I don't think she heard me. I waved to Daisy and Irvin as they got in a different police car. Where are they going, I asked an officer. They're going home so their parents can take them to the police station, the police officer said, which made me suddenly feel bad that both of my parents were far away in the city. The officer put her hand on my shoulder. Your folks are on their way too, she said. Hopefully they'll be at the station by the time we get there. Thanks, I said. Abby and I climbed into the back of the officer's police car. I stared, out the bo I stared at the boathouse as we drove away. I still couldn't believe what had happened. It was the most exciting, intense, and scary thing that ha had ever happened to me. And exhausting, too, I guess, because then I fell asleep. Wake up, kid. We're here. Huh? Where are we? What happened? Well, you've had quite a day. That's what happened. I rubbed my eyes. Abby was next to me. Slowly, it all came back to me. Mrs. Craig, Barnaby Bratford, the boathouse, Irwin and Daisy, Abby and me. I sat up, got out of the car, and looked around. We were at the police station. Is Mr. Bradford going to be in a lot of trouble? He sure is, said the police officer. We've had detectives working on this case for a while. There's been a series of jewelry thefts in town, and they were just starting to tie them back to the Bradford babysitting service. The only thing missing was hard evidence. But now, thanks to you and your pals, we have it. This guy's going to jail for a long, long time. His sister, too. It wasn't all Mrs. Craig's fault, I heard myself saying. He made her do it. She tried to help us in the end. The police officer looked surprised. Surprised. Well, she'll get her day in court. She nodded at Abby. That's a pretty darn cute dog you got there, by the way. She's more than cute. I looked at Abby and smiled. I'm pretty sure she smiled back. The officer pointed and smiled, too. In the meantime, there are some people here who'd really like to see you. I looked and saw my parents and Misty standing inside the police station with scared looks on their faces. I have to admit, I kind of liked seeing them all worried about me, and part of me wanted to let them worry just a few seconds more. But it was only a small part of me, so I started walking toward them. Then I started running, and when they saw me, they ran too. When we reached each other, we all fell into a big, long group hug. Hey, I said. My mom was too busy crying to hug me. My dad's face broke into a huge smile of relief as he picked me up in his arms. Jimmy, he said over and over. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Did you get the job, I asked him. My dad laughed. You are something else, he said. Finally, he put me down. The Missy came over and hugged me again, really hard. She was crying, too. I wasn't sure I'd ever seen her cry before, except for that one time that she wanted to move to Paris by herself for her 12th birthday, and my dad said no. I hate you, she whispered. I hate you more, I whispered back, but neither of us meant it. 8.31 p.m. Later that night, after we were finally able to leave the police station, we had an amazing dinner, fried chicken, applesauce, fresh corn, and my mom's special rice, tons of butter. There wasn't a fried beet or garlic muffin in sight. That was delicious, I said, wiping my mouth. What's for dessert? We're going out for ice cream, my dad said. Misty and I high-fived. Abby wagged her tail. Before we go, I want to say something, my mom said. I know things have been crazy around the house. I work a lot, and your dad's been trying to find a job, and maybe it seems that we've been ignoring you guys a little bit. She stopped talking for a second, wiped a tear from her eye, then continued. I guess that sometimes we forget that the most we forget what the two most important things in our lives are. I was confused. Which are what? Misty smacked me on the arm. 
Us, you dummy. Oh, I said, rubbing my arm, and also, ouch. My dad laughed, but then turned serious again. So about that job thing, I'm going to take it, but only part-time. I do want to go back to work full-time at some point. It's only fair that you know that. But for now, it's important that I be here when you guys get home from school. No more babysitters for the time being, added my mom. I breathed a sigh of relief. Stop using the word babysitter, Misty said. It makes me sound like I'm five years old. Would you prefer chauffeur, asked my dad. Misty snickered. Definitely. Then, for some annoying reason, she put me in a headlock. Now that we're one big happy family again, can we go get that ice cream? Wait, I said, untangling myself from her grip. I want to say something, too. It's about Abby. We're keeping her, honey, my mom said. Of course we're keeping her. It's not that. I bent down to scratch Abby's ears. It's just... I think there's something you should know about her. Abby suddenly started jumping up and down, barking wildly. What's going on? asked Misty. What's she barking at? Is it a deer? Another burglar? I looked out the front window, but didn't see anything. Then I looked out the back window, but didn't see anything there either. For some reason, though, Abby kept barking and barking. What were you going to tell us about Abby? yelled my dad over the barking, other than she's going to make us all deaf. I tried to talk, but Abby kept barking and barking. Then, finally, I got it. I understood why she was barking. She didn't want me to say anything. She wanted her secret powers to say to stay secret. Part 4. The Rest of the Story Friday, August 29th, 7.07 a.m. For some reason, when I woke up the next morning, I thought my blotch might be gone. Wrong. Here's the good news, though. <clears throat> the ointment my mom got me was working. It was no longer the size of Alaska, or even California or Texas, the three biggest states in the country. It was more like Nebraska. I could live with Nebraska. When I went downstairs to get some cereal before school, everyone was there. Mom was still home, even though it was after seven. Misty was sitting on the counter, texting somebody. And for some reason, Dad was making a huge breakfast. Eggs, bacon, juice, everything. Dad, what's with the spread, Misty said. You know it's a school day, right, I added. We're kind of in a rush. School day, schmool day, he answered. I'm making breakfast for my family. He put a plate in front of me. Dig in. I tried to look excited. Great! Fact. My dad's eggs taste worse than boiled kelp. I took one bite, tried not to gag, and wolfed down a bowl of super sugar flakies. Then I grabbed my backpack. Well, don't want to be late for school, I said. I was halfway out the door before I felt my mom's, my mom's hand on my shoulder. I turned back, and she gave me a long, strong, warm hug. It felt really good. Have a good day at work, Mom, I said, but she wasn't letting go. I feel like what happened was my fault, she whispered. It wasn't, I said. It wasn't anyone's fault, except Barnaby Bradford's. She smiled at me, and I could tell she was crying a little. How did I get such a great kid? Just lucky, I guess. She gave me one last squeeze. I'd take you over Hank Barlow any day, she said. 10.47 a.m. That was so gross when she licked your blotch, Erwin said. It kind of was, Daisy agreed. We were at recess going over the whole thing for about the 62nd time. All the other kids who'd listened the first 61 times had drifted away, but we were still going at it. Don't you guys get it, I said. When she licked my blotch, all these amazing things happened. It ended up saving our lives, practically. I leaned my blotch toward Irwin's face. Do you want to give it a lick and see? <clears throat> Irwin looked like he was about to throw up. Ugh, I'm not getting anywhere near that thing. I may as well tell you guys, I said. I'm pretty sure Abby has secret powers. Here we go again, Irwin said. I'm serious, I said. Like, she's a vampire, and a superhero, and a crime fighter. They were looking at me like I was crazy, but there was no turning back now. A superhero, crime-fighting, vampire dog. 
She has all these powers that she uses for the good of my mankind, just like Jonah Forrester and Hank Barlow, except she's a dog. Erwin started laughing uncontrollably, but Daisy managed to look like she was trying to believe me. What makes you think that, she asked. Did you see how far she jumped from me to you guys on the roof? That wasn't jumping, that was flying. I've seen other dogs jump that far, Erwin said. Well, she sleeps all day, I said. Erwin stopped laughing long enough to sputter. Most dogs sleep all day. I rattled off the list of Abby's vampire habits, but Erwin had an answer for every one. Me. She hates the light. Him. You told me she has something wrong with her eyes. Me. She sneaks out of the house in the middle of the night. Him. You might have dreamed that. Me. I saw her bite one person and almost bite another. <clears throat> Him. Dogs bite, especially when threatened. That's what they do. Me. But Abby only but only Abby bites to fight crime. Erwin thought for a minute, then said, So what you're saying is that Abby isn't a crime fighter. She's a crime biter. He started cracking up again, while Daisy and Erwin started chanting, Crime biter! Crime biter! Abby is the crime biting dog! That made me mad and desperate. Me. She likes chocolate, which looks a lot like blood. Him rolling his eyes. Fail! Total fail! Finally, I lost my patience and yelled, Abby is a superhero crime-fighting vampire dog, and I don't care what you say. Erwin and Daisy stopped laughing long enough to give each other the, I think he's a little crazy look. How about this, Daisy said. How about the fact that, that before you got Abby, you were kind of shy. You kept to yourself and spent most of your time watching old episodes of Stop Police and reading the same vampire books over and over. And now you've been through an incredible adventure and stopped a horrible criminal and were a really brave hero. She smiled. So maybe that's Abby's secret power. I suppose that could be true, I said, even though I wasn't convinced. Hey, I have an idea, Erwin said. If she has special powers, why don't you ask her to remove that thing on your face? I immediately touched my blotch. It was still there, red and warm. I think your mark gives your face some real character, Daisy said. I felt myself starting to blush, which made the blotch get even hotter. What do you mean? Daisy lightly touched my blotch with her finger. I stopped blushing. I may have even stopped breathing. I mean, she said, it makes you seem like you're an interesting person who lives an interesting life. Erwin snorted. Well, you definitely, definitely led an interesting last couple days, he said, but it didn't have anything to do with a superhero crime-fighting vampire dog. I was about to get mad at him, but then I remembered he'd help save my dog's life. Fact, if someone saves your dog's life, you're not allowed to get mad at them ever again, no matter how many annoying things they say. Suddenly, there was a lot of noise over by the jungle gym. A bad feeling came over me. It was the same exact place where Baxter Bradford had made fun of me and my blotch the day before. But a lot had happened since then, including his dad getting arrested. As the three of us ran over to see what was going on, I heard yelling. Your dad's a crook, someone yelled. He tried to kill a dog, someone else yelled. Are you going to try and kill a dog too? Then I saw Baxter sitting by himself on a swing. They were screaming and yelling at him. This time, he was the one being bullied. I'm surprised he's in school today, Erwin said. Daisy sighed sadly. I heard it's like a circus at his house with a ton of news reporters and stuff, so I guess he's better off here than there. I wasn't sure what to do. Baxter had made my life miserable for a long, long time, and his dad had tried to kill my dog. But for some reason, I didn't want to join in. In fact, I wanted to do just the opposite. That's enough, you guys, I yelled. Stop it. Everyone stopped and looked at me, shocked. I guess they figured I would be more excited than anybody to give Baxter a taste of his own medicine. I mean it, I continued. Leave Baxter alone. It's not his fault his dad is a bad person. Then I looked at him. Just like it's not my fault, I have a mark on my face. Baxter got up off the swing and walked over to me. 
I didn't mean any of that stuff I did to you, he said. I guess I was just a real jerk because somehow I knew my dad was a jerk too. It made me mad all the time, and I took it out on you. He looked like he was about to cry. I'm really sorry. He stuck his hand out. I shook it. Thank you for saying sorry, I told him. And you know what? I get mad sometimes too. I get my mad, get mad at my mom for working all the time. And I just got mad at my dad for wanting to find a job so he didn't have to take care of us anymore. But that doesn't make it okay to be mean to other people. Daisy and Erwin walked up to us. Erwin looked a little nervous, but Daisy went right up to Baxter and put her hand on his shoulder. Do you maybe want to eat lunch with us, she asked. Baxter smiled, and I realized it was the first time I'd ever seen him look truly happy. I'd like that, he said. I'd like that a lot. And the four of us went inside.